Hello children. Today we will start with the lesson, the electoral process. Before we go to the process, let us try to understand elections. Elections helps to bring a change in power through peaceful means. People's representatives are selected through elections. Different political parties get opportunity to rule. What is representation? Representation is electing some people on behalf of entire population. The representatives are expected to be responsible to the people and give preference to the welfare of the people. Now in a democracy, it is not possible to involve the entire population in the decision making process. Now this resulted in this practice of electing some people who would represent the entire population. Election Commission. Now, why do we need election commission? The electoral process should also be free, fair and reliable. To ensure that the constitution of India has made provision for an independent election commission to administer the election process in India. Who has made provisions for election commission? Article 324 of the Indian Constitution has established this autonomous body. It consists of one chief election commissioner and two other commissioners. Who appoints the election commissioner? The president appoints the election commissioners. Election Commission. Let us find some more details about Election Commission. The Chief Election Commissioner cannot be removed from his post easily or on account of any political reasons. There is separate provision made for the expenses of Election Commission. Now this is made so that the Election Commission does not depend on the government. The Election Commission does not have a separate staff. But government officers, teachers and other employees assist or execute the process of elections. Functions of election commissions. The first is preparing the voters list. Now it is the responsibility of the election commission to prepare the list of eligible voters. By this we mean updating the existing voters list, removing the voters who are not eligible, maybe in case of death, and including the names of new voters. Decide the timetable and the program of elections. So the second function is deciding the timetable. So when the election process starts, in how many stages the selection will be conducted, when to declare the result, Everything is decided by the election commission. The third function is scrutiny of the application of candidates. So candidates of both political parties as well as independent candidates, they have to fill their applications. Now this application includes the information about themselves. The election commission goes through all the applications and allows the eligible candidates to contest the elections. The next function is giving recognition to political parties. Now, India is a multi-party system. A number of parties, both at regional and national level exist. So all political parties are required to be recognized by the election commission. The election commission can both recognize and de-recognize any political party. In fact, even the election symbols which the political parties use are allotted or given by the election commission. The fifth function is to resolve any disputes relating to elections. The election commission has the responsibility of settling any dispute that may arise. They can declare any candidate disqualified or can also conduct re-elections in case if they feel so. The first elections of 1951. 
Now, after independence, the first elections were held in the year 1951. Sukumar Sen was the first chief election commissioner. Sukumar Sen, before he was made the chief election commissioner, he was serving in Indian civil services. Now, he was given the charge of election commissioner after the election commission was established in 1950. When the first elections were being conducted, there was a challenging task of preparing voters list. Many people at that time were illiterate. So to make the process easier, a special system was adopted where 20 lakhs steel boxes were made for voting and election symbols were stuck on the boxes. The voters were given blank ballot papers which they were supposed to drop in the box having the election symbol. So since people were not able to read, election symbols or pictures were stuck on the boxes so that even the illiterate people were able to identify which party or which candidate they were voting for. Sham Saran Negi from Himachal Pradesh was the first voter of India. He exercised his right to vote on 25th October 1951 in Lok Sabha elections. Now, government has to observe the code of conduct declared by the election commission. So who is superior, the government or the election commission? Now, since the election commission prepares the code of conduct, and the government has to follow this code of conduct in case of any disputes or in case of anything related to elections the election commission is superior to the government now let's discuss this why is it so some constituencies are kept reserved for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. The socially weaker section of the society may not have the required resources, education and contact to contest and win elections. Now, if the weaker section is not elected, then the voice of a significant section of population will not be heard. So the makers of constitution thought that if they reserve constituencies for the weaker sections, it will become easier for them to contest elections and to get elected. And this would in turn bring them at least politically at par with other sections of society. Let's see the second point. Every political party has an election symbol. Now we discussed earlier that the election commission allots election symbols to the political parties. It helps in identification of a party by a voter. And this makes the voting process easier, especially for the illiterate. At the time of voting and counting of votes, the official representatives of political parties remain present. Now, when we look at the third point, what do we understand? Now, the official representatives remain present at the time of voting to help the voters find their names in the voters list. To help the senior citizens and handicapped voters reach the polling stations and to see whether there is transparency during the electoral process. They also remain present when the counting of votes is being done to ensure that no malpractice is going on and also to keep themselves updated with the number of seats that party has won. The fourth point and why is it so? Recognized parties have equal opportunity to present their site before media, such as television and radio. The election commission has arrangement with Prasar Bharti in providing free broadcast time on all India radio and Doordarshan to national and state parties. This ensures a level playing field in elections. The political parties in this manner can reach out to every corner of the country. Also, the media provides them with an opportunity to give first-hand information to voters 
about their policies, programs, and views on major issues. Now, what will you do? Voting is a duty as well as a responsibility. Now, what do we mean by this? India is the largest democracy in the world. Elections play a major role in the working of India's democracy. The Indian constitution has given the right to all Indian citizens about the age of 18 to vote. Every single vote counts. One vote can help select the right candidate. Hence, we should vote responsibly since the country's future lies in our decision.